Hello everybody, this is Dr. Jennifer Taylor and today we're going to talk about question design in Qualtrics. So let's get started. I'm going to share my screen with you. And I am currently in Qualtrics and I have a default question block. Um, and inside this default question block, I'm going to add a new question. So click add new question. And for right now, just put multiple choice. So we'll select multiple choice. And this is what we will end up getting. Now in this box, notice we have this box and then we have an outer line. The outer line is your block. Inside of a block, you can put multiple questions. This inner line is going to be your question. And say I add another question, you would see that I would have two inner boxes. Um, but these inner boxes are your questions. You have three little dots in each question box. You also have three little dots in the block. And I'll go over the block information in a separate video on block design. But for this survey question, you're, if you click on those dots, you'll see you have move question. You can copy the question. You can replace this question from your library of questions if you have one. You can add a page break. So I'm going to add a page break. And then this will break these two up so that the respondent only sees one question at a time. You can preview the question. I can see what it looks like. So as you can see, I would, it's only uh, one at a time. And then you can add a note, you can delete it. So say I want to delete this question, I would just delete it. Say I wanted to delete this page break, I would simply click there. Okay, so say I'm not satisfied with the type of question. I can go over here to question type and right now it's set to multiple choice. I can make it a text entry. And on this text entry, I can make it a single line a multiple line, and this is more of an essay box kind of format, uh, an essay text box, and multiple lines, I do believe you can um, add extra single lines, like a single line, you could turn it into a form. Let's see, essay box, and then you could do a password. So we'll keep it single line for now. You can add requirements. A forced response means that if someone takes your survey, they must answer the question before moving on. Um, a request response is um, something that I'm not familiar with, so I'm not gonna pretend that I know what the answer is, uh, but I do know that the forced response is mandatory. All right, I'm gonna click that off. Uh, add validation. Validation is you say this question was, what is your zip code? All right, so we click on it and say we wanted validation. We know a zip code as a seven, four, I think it's five. Characters, uh, four, eight, one, four. Yeah, it's five. All right, so we have five characters. So maybe we have a maximum length of five, a character range. We could do content type. Um, so we could go here and we could put a postal code. Um, we could go in here and put a state if that was what our. Um, if we were looking for it to be an actual, if our, if our question was, what is your state? It could validate it so that what people put in there was a correct state name. And so this is a postal code. It'll make sure that all the postal codes are correctly input. You won't get um, errors. And if there is an error, the respondent will be told. Um, so you can do dates, you can do numbers, <laughs> you can make it so that text is the only thing required. What 
this validation does is it just helps you make sure that the respondent puts in the appropriate data for that question. So I'm going to turn that off. Um, you have question behavior, which I'm going to talk about in another video. Um, and essentially, that is it for question type. I do recommend that you play around with the different types. I'm sorry different types of questions. Um, so that was it for the text entry. We also have text or graphic, and this is used to do um, like introductions. It's when you're only gonna type in like a paragraph or something, maybe it's a description of what the survey is. Maybe you wanted to put a picture in there, you could put that in. Uh, you can do a matrix question uh, for a lot of questions that are liquor that have, um, Please indicate the extent to which you agree or disagree with the following questions. Um, that would be the statement, and then you would have your scales, and then you would have um, each statement listed here. In terms of the answer type, you can have it allow one answer, allow multiple answers. You can check all that apply. You can have a drop down list. You can have a drag and drop. We're gonna allow one for this. You could have um, a scale of three, five, seven, whatever you like. We can also use suggested statements. So again, if you're using, um, we don't wanna do that for the statements. Let's say um, the scale points. So here's the scale points. Say we have a five point scale. We can use suggested scale points and the scales can be disagree to agree. It can be dissatisfied. It can be appropriate to inappropriate, male, female. Um, so this can help you with all your different uh, scale types. So you can just go through here and kind of check. Um, unimportant, describes my feelings. Um, there's different intervals, different quantities expectations, um, but you can go through it here and try to find a scale that's already pre-written for you that um, will match the number of measurement items that you wanna have. So if you wanna have a five point scale, you can set it. If you change your mind and you want a three point scale, you can so you got to turn it off and then turn it to three, then turn it back on. There you go. So some of them will go down to three, some of them won't. Um, intervals, it keeps it at five. But you could reverse order it far too little, far too much. So it'll change which way it goes. You could have show all, just show the first two points. I do recommend that you show all. And I also do recommend that you stay around a five point scale um, when you're dealing with interval scales or Likert scales. Five is the, the average, the norm. I've seen seven, I've seen nine, um, but five is the average that people have used. Okay, so your standard Likert, a profile where everything is individual. You can do it as a carousel. So you have a lot of fun choices. You can add labels. You can add label to the top or take it away. You do want to make sure you make it mobile friendly. Most, most surveys nowadays are taken on people's phones. You can transpose the table where you put the statements on top, the scales on the side. So you can kind of play <coughs> with the look and feel of the questions. You can also add requirements here, forcing the response or re requesting the response, adding validation. Um, so for example, um, if someone puts slightly too much and that's selected, I don't 
I don't know why you would do that, but um, you could. Usually you don't need validation on these types of questions. Um, adding the force response is helpful, but validation on things where they're not writing in questions is it is usually not all that helpful. All right, so matrix tables, you have sliders. So I can slide. Let's see. And uh, let's get. Say we have three statements. We just have it a hot mess right now. Let's see, where is the value? It's my family. It's the grid lines. I can use suggested statements. Okay. Okay, sorry, I just went back to see if this would help with the slider. And it did. So I can add to the number. Typically, you wouldn't have these statements up here. So I'm kind of struggling to understand why this, the statements are there, because it would be, say, on a scale of one to 100, what grade would you give our company on? So on a, Of one of it's a zero base scale, so zero to one hundred. What grade would you give us on the following features? Um, and say we had convenience. Say the next one was like customer service. So on and so forth. And so then you could just use this and say the grade would be an 82. Um, so that's how you could use a slider. Form fields. This is uh, if you want to have a form and you want them to be able to type in answers. So you can do a form field, rank order. You can have them put one, I think this is like, you can have them change the order. You can do drag and drop, radio buttons, text box, where they write it in themselves, select a box. Um, so there's different ways you can do rank order, side by side. So you would have um, two answers to choose from. I don't, I, I rarely use side by side. The net promoter score on a scale, this one is on a scale of one to 10. On a scale of one to 10, how, or sorry, it's zero to 10. Zero to 10, how likely would you be to recommend? our products to a friend. So that's a typically what a net promoter scale question looks like on a scale of zero to 10. How likely would you be to recommend our products to a friend or family member? And then they can select not likely at all, all the way to extremely likely. So that's net promoter. Uh, timing is not something that the respondent sees, but say you have something you want them to read and you want to validate that they've read it, you can do it by inserting a timing question and then it will tell you how long they spent on that page. 
And then you can determine if you put something really long up there and you know it should take at least two minutes to read and they only spent two seconds on it, you know that they didn't read it and therefore they need to be eliminated from your data set. Uh, graphic sliders, you can add a, a visual, you can have constant sums, um, have them upload files, pick groups and ranks, drill downs. Um, some neat ones are a heat map. I don't know why it's not. So let's do that, new question. Let's do a heat map. And what you do, I'm gonna add a graphic and say, this and then you kind of have them select what place they notice first would be the question and then they would place the spot on where they notice first and so that would be a heat map question Hot spot is similar, but they have a little little box they can move around. Uh, meta information is just information that's not displayed to the user that you can add on. You can do CAPTCHA verifications. And um, they have highlight. So those are all the different types of questions that you can use. Let me know if you have any questions. I'm gonna be doing another video on the um, block design. That's the next video. So um, have a good day. I hope you enjoyed it.